this hi guys this is part two um the sermon from this morning called the medicine of a may heart um i i was so enthused this morning in the direction that god had given me i didn't really conclude my first thought so i apologize for that i kind of told you the two stories and then left it there but um laughter is healing um laughter is healing and and the lord, the lord brought to my mind the healing part of laughter and could it be that you're so focused on what other people are doing and how they're doing it wrong and you are so focused on um, the downfall of other people that you're not you're not seeing you're not seeing God in your life in the little things because um, you're not seeing healing in your life and restoration because you're so focused on the things that are going wrong or the negative things in your life. And I'm not saying there isn't negative stuff that happens. There is negative stuff that happens, but it's all about what you what you're focused on. And I'm not talking about avoiding the negative things. You don't avoid the negative things because that doesn't change anything. You have to work through them. But as you're working through them, your attitude towards the negative things will take you um, very far. And that's, those are what those two stories were to teach me. Like, um, those, um, the stories where I, I forgot that I, um, didn't have my breakfast on my train, and the bank had the wrong number, so that's why the computer wasn't calling me, was to show you that the things in my life didn't change. Whatever's going on with me personally didn't change, but my perspective changed. And that's what laughter does. It releases endorphins. And it can change your perspective on uh, everything. Cause my day could have said, my day could have gone much differently until I said, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot my breakfast and got all upset. Or I can't believe they didn't see or whatever that my phone number was wrong. Why didn't they tell me that before? I've called for years. Or even worse, I could have blamed myself and got all all down about it. Or I could have blamed those who were who were um who were assisting me. Why couldn't they get me back? This is so stupid. They've known me for years. I could have said that. But instead of saying all of that and turning it into a negative, I just laughed. And it didn't change all the personal stuff I was going through. It didn't change anything like that. But it changed me and my perspective. And that's what ne- and that's what laughter does. That's what a positive attitude does. It doesn't change what's going on around you, but it changes your perspective. We all go through awful stuff. We all go through crappy stuff, but it's all about our perspective and how we and how we take it and how we um, deal with the stuff around us. And we, we have to work. We don't avoid that stuff. We have to work through it but while we're working through it we could have an attitude that we're not a victim 
we are victor and we will get through whatever we are working through, like I said this morning, we will get through it. And like I said, the situation um, this week didn't, didn't change. The bad, the challenging stuff was still there. But what it did, my ability to laugh changed my perspective and my perspective changed me. So things around you don't change or just have a positive attitude, it will be all right. No, it won't. But what having a positive attitude or a God attitude does, it doesn't change the circumstance. It changes you. And that's the key to it. And that's why it's so important to have a God attitude or a God perspective on how to see the situation. So instead of um, having a negative attitude next time or a false positive attitude, which is even worse, where you say, oh, I have a positive attitude, but it's false. We all know that you're thinking that this is awful, but you don't want other people to think um, that that you think that this is awful, so you lie. Instead of doing all of that, just ask God, God, what is my attitude um, in your eyes? What should the God perspective on this situation be? Because when you get the God perspective, He fills you with the knowledge and tools and strategies for your struggles that you need to deal with whatever you're dealing with. Good, bad, bad, negative, positive, whatever. And he changes your perspective. So thank you guys so much for for standing with me and being with me. I really appreciate it. Bye. And don't forget to go back either on Facebook or YouTube and and watch The Medicine of a Merry Heart. Because a merry heart is healing. A merry heart is restoring. And that's what it does. That, that's what happens. It restores you. And I thought the two issues that I talked about this morning were related. I told the two stories and then I went on a kind of rant about how um, we should lift up people, not try to expose them with videos and whatever. I thought they weren't connected. But quite often when you try to expose people, especially people in leadership and their downfall. Um, you know, you have an attitude of, rebu- of rebuke, not restoration. And the Lord wants to restore, restore the attitude of restoration in the church and not rebuke. But the problem is, uh, rebuking gets a lot more views than restoration does. Um, calling someone out um, gets a lot more attention than restoration does. But remember, we, uh, that person's thing may not be your thing. So you feel free to judge that person because A, you don't know them, and B, their, their thing is not your thing. But remember this, today you could be in one place, but one thing could happen tomorrow that will change everything. And you could be in that person's place. 
so Paul says to restore one, but you're like, how do I do that? Well, you pray for them. And instead of uh, praying against them and doing whatever, just ask the Lord, when I don't know what to pray for, I say, Lord, how do I pray for this person? Tell me how to pray for this person. And he will give me words that I couldn't have thought of myself. He will bring issues to mind that I couldn't have thought of myself. That's how you restore a person. We restore through prayer. And restoring is what the Lord wants us to do, not rebuking. Being positive, loving, and merry is what the Lord wants us to do. Solomon says in Proverbs, a merry heart does good like a medicine. So a merry heart heals, a merry heart delivers, a, a merry heart restores. And that's what the Lord wants us. The Lord wants the church to not only be a hospital, but a place of safety and a place of restoration. And that's what he wants from us today. So guys, thank you so much. Bye.